After finally reaching the strong consistent trade winds, the fleet are in a high speed drag race towards Miami. A few days of intermittent breeze have given way to perfect conditions for now. There are still two groups at the moment, a three-way contest at the front between Puma, Camper and Telefonica, and not too far behind a battle between Groupama and Abu Dhabi. We finally got some good uh, trade wind conditions after the never ending doldrums crossing. I don't know why we ever thought it was gonna be a quick one. So we're blasting past all the uh, Windward Islands right now. Barbados soon. Small trim. And um, we've got Telefonica and Camper in our sights. They're just behind us, so it's a good close race. Delph, what do you think? Going fast at the mark. <laughs> nice and warm water, about 30 degrees. I think we've done probably about 450 miles today, so it's good. However, it's not just Puma enjoying the wind in their sails, Camper and Telefonica are right on Puma's tail. However, skipper Chris Nicholson knows all good things come to an end. Looks like our trade wind, uh, nice running conditions will end in the next 24 hours. And then some more light air zones as we head on our way into Miami. As with every light air zone and where the breeze gets a little um, funky, there's a lot, of, a lot of decisions have to be made and, and probably the ones that will decide the race. That could open the door for Group Armour and Abu Dhabi, who so far trailed behind. We're not, that, we're not doing too badly, but we are creeping away at the moment. But it's uh, only for the next couple of days, then it's going to stop ahead and we're going to come, come, in, come back into them. So that's uh, going to be the crucial moment. Transitioning from the dead air of the doldrums to the speed of the trade winds may be thrilling, but even for the elite crews of the Volvo Ocean Race, there are always risks involved. If you're unlucky and you get hit by a wave, there's no way you can uh, stay where you are, so you will uh, come flying back in the boat and land somewhere. It takes a couple of days before you get used to it. Basically. After challenging the leaders for most of their route around the Brazilian coast, Abu Dhabi have now fallen behind fourth place Group Armour. The strain is starting to show. Uh, came in the last skid boy, uh, about six miles I think. Lower and slower. It's not a good thing at the moment, we're getting ahead of Not much else to say. Having already experienced some of the harshest conditions on Earth in this race, Telefonica celebrated its one-year birthday on Wednesday. Zane Gills reflects on the boat that's carried his team to the overall lead. It's gotten us this far, it's got us good results, it's a very good boat, it's one-year-old, uh, a lot of sailing, a lot of miles. I can't tell you exactly mileage, exact mileage on it, but yeah, it's doing the job for us at the moment. First month when the boat was uh, new, it was just basically doing a big shakedown of the boat, getting all the systems working, and then um, you know, make sure the sails fitted, and then we spent quite a lot of time in Lanzarote sail testing. With over 10,000 miles of sailing left in this race before the finish line in Galway, Telefonica still has a long way to go.